this next speaker I was told to bring up. We've been working together a long time. I can remember when there was just a few of us in California, and we thought that it was crazy that at that point, uh, over a million people were locked up in the United States, and we thought we wanted to do something about it. And so together with numerous activists from across the country, many of whom had been incarcerated, and led by Angela Davis, who herself was incarcerated and sat on death row. We forget that quite often. We came together, we called it a critical resistance, and that call became a movement that was then documented in the new Jim Crow, and that when people wouldn't fund this stuff when we first started it, now everybody is in here, and there's nowhere you can go where you don't know what I mean when I say all of us. I said all of us. Welcome Dorsey Nunn to the stage. How y'all doing friends and family? Right? How y'all doing family? Because I need to have a different conversation with you. I'm one of the people that have been coming back and forth to Drug Policy Alliance conferences probably since 2003, right? And I can remember when my wife was dying in 2005, and I'm flying into the conference every day because it was significant for me to be there. So when I say, how you doing, family, that's what I really mean because it was here that I learned that when I was running a 12-step program, that I should also pass out syringes to the people who was in the park. It was here that I learned that a person can't hear you if they throwing up on your shoes when they kicking, and I should give them methadone. So I'm not siloed. I integrated my own spirit in a place like this. My highlight in these spaces is being able to step in a room and tell a full-throated truth to family. So when you hear me talk about Pookie, I'm only talking about the equity. So it's not just that we end the drug war, we do it in an equitable way. Because if you just want to get high and keep me broke and my family poor, we still have a problem. So at a certain point, if I can't come in this room and say we need to struggle around the question of equity, because it may not be drug policy money that moves the question of legalization of marijuana. It could be the money coming out of Silicon Valley that moves the question of marijuana, and it could have moved the question of marijuana in the state of California. And they may not cared about equity in a real way. So at a real point, family, let's not forget about Pookie. Because Pookie need to feed his family too. <laughs> Two years ago, I showed up and I wore a t shirt around this conference. And the t shirt says, Let's not screw Pookie again. On the back of the t shirt, it said, Ask me why. Yeah, I brought my whole crew. We didn't wear all of us none t-shirts that year. I figured like we was going to legalize something. Let's have some equitable conversations in that process. Because like we had forgot that when we ended prohibition, alcohol prohibition, we had black bootleggers and we didn't acquire distilleries or the business that came with it once it was legalized. We screwed Pookie. 
Y'all don't remember in my community we was running numbers. And we decided to do lotto. We screwed Pookie. And I can't hold y'all accountable for that part of it. But what about right now? We on the cusp of legalizing marijuana. And if we don't have this conversation and we don't act like a family, we will practice the ugly part of being an American. Racism, supremacy, and exclusion. So I ask you, family, let's not screw Pookie. All of